this season, Christmas. You know why? I just go around and say Merry Christmas and offends people. Amen. And I like that. I, in Walmart, tried to pass out tracks the other day, and the lady said, I can't take that. I said, well, can I tell you Merry Christmas? <laughs> she said, they don't allow us to take anything. I said, well, take this. Jesus Christ died for you. Amen. So, you know, if there's ever a time of the year that we can witness to people, it's now. I mean, just by saying Merry Christmas. Now I always say, now remember, Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. And uh, I, uh, not too long ago, we were somewhere. I, I don't know where it was, but we, I, I checked out at the place. And when you're with Janet, a lot of times you're checking out somewhere. Amen. But anyway, we're checking out. <laughs> we're checking out. And, and, uh, but she wasn't with me. So, and this lady just looked down. And I just said, uh, I just started telling her, I said, you know the, the Lord loves you. We got, I got a witness to her. Amen. I mean, and don't, and you know, the time I left, she said, well, I'm saved. I'm just having an awful day. I, I just encourage you. Uh, it's not hard to tell people about the Lord. And the Lord has put that on my heart, lady. Uh, you know, one thing to be a preacher, but also to be a better witness. Amen. And, uh, and so I've been trying to pass out more tracks and do a little bit more for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because He's given me such a wonderful gift. A gift that others ought to see. And that's what we're going to preach about tonight. Kind of goes along with Brother Martin's message. We just got three points. We'll be done. We'll head out of here. But Ephesians chapter 2. We'll read uh, several verses here. Uh, but before we do that, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Dear Father, we come before you, Lord. Truly, we're nothing. and You're everything, Lord. God, I'd ask you to give me words worthy, Lord, realizing that I, I'm a nothing, Lord. And God, I need your touch because, God, I, I don't want to fail you, and I don't want to fail the church. God, if they come tonight and they don't get anything, Lord, chances are the, the devil will be on them not to come back again. And, Lord, I pray they've already got something. I pray, God, their hearts have already been stirred. I pray, God, the light's already shined upon them, Father. But, God, would you just help us tonight, Lord? Truly, we live in desperate times, Lord. God, hard times. Lord, but there's been others that's went through a lot harder times. God, I pray that we look up instead of looking around. God, we just give you the glory in Christ's name. Amen. In Ephesians, the book of Ephesians in chapter 2, in verse 8, it says, uh, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Boy, I'm glad it's a gift. Because I've never worked enough to be able to pay for it. It goes on in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death. But, well, I'm glad when God butts in. Amen. I mean, if He just stopped right there, we'd been in big trouble. Amen. Yes. But thank God, He said, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And John 4.10, it said, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. If we look in the book of 1 Corinthians, in chapter 9, in verse 15, Paul says this, Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. You know what that tells me? I, I haven't got words, amen, can explain what God has done for me, amen. I mean, I could talk for a million years and I'd never be able to tell what the gift of God has done for me, amen. What it has done, what it is doing, and what it will do, amen. And I tell you what, maybe we ought to just to get excited about the gift of God, amen. In Isaiah chapter 
chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Amen. Yeah. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. I'm not worried about the government. It's bound to fail. It's run by men. Amen. Yeah. My true, you can ask my wife, and last couple services at the church, this has been my prayer request. Pray for sanity in the Senate. Amen. Yeah. I think they're all insane. They're all crazy. Amen. Yeah. Yes, amen and amen. I mean, how hard is it to balance a check <laughs> checkbook? An eighth grader can do it. Amen. <laughs> glory, glory. It says, And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Boy, I'm thankful for that precious gift, amen, that he's given us. I, I look at that and I, first of all, it, I, I, it, you know, you're looking for the perfect gift. Amen. I mean, uh, we shop and we shop and we shop and we want to find that perfect gift, amen. Yeah. We want to find that gift when they open it up, they're really, really going to get excited about it, amen. And that bothers me because a lot of you have received the precious gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and you ain't a bit excited about it. Amen. I mean, there, there are gifts that you can use a lifetime. I know that uh, one guy showed me a pocket knife. He said, you know what my dad had that night? Not this one, but he was showing me that night. He said, my dad had this night and his dad had that night. And now I have that knife, amen. And that gift lasted a lifetime. Listen, I got a, I got a gift that's going to last a lifetime, and it can go on to be on this life. It's going to last an eternity. It's never going to grow old, amen. And boy, it's something that I'd like to hand down to my children, amen, and the next generation. But if we don't get excited about it, it ain't going to happen, amen. amen. Why is it a perfect gift? Well, because it comes from an unchangeable priesthood in the book of Hebrew. I mean, there's never going to be another high priest except the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to get a new one every year. Amen. Today, people, it seems like in the churches, just about every two years, we've got to get a new preacher. Amen. Thank God every two years I don't have to get a new Savior. Amen. I don't have to get back and get retreaded. Amen. It's a gift that's unchangeable. Amen. It's unchangeable, but it changed me. Amen. And this gift, if it didn't change you, you didn't get it. Amen. Amen. Why is it perfect? Because it came from an uncorruptible God. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through yeah. It's uncorrupted. That's right. It's incorruptible. That's right. Amen. It, it, it cannot be corrupted. It's the perfect gift. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I like to say, and with that perfect gift comes an undefiled inheritance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean that. Hey, I might not look like much. Praise God, I ain't got much money. I probably owe more money than I got. And I know I owe more money than I got. Amen. Amen. But I'm just a rich man separated from the resources. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to come into my inheritance. And it's undefiled. It's uncorrupted. Amen. And it's waiting there for me. Amen. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And every Everything that he has, I have. Now that makes me excited. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, don't get excited about it, though. It's just an eternal gift. It's just on the file, uncorruptible, unchangeable. Amen. I wouldn't raise my hand. You know, I wouldn't wave. I wouldn't say amen. I mean, that would, wouldn't be right getting excited. Amen. But if you open up any gifts this Christmas, you better not get excited about it. Somebody's going, to, somebody's going to unwrap that iPad too. Oh! <laughs> Amen. That thing, you, you, you drop it the right way. It's gone. 
It'll be gone. Amen. Amen. Let me set on it. I guarantee you it'll be gone. <laughs> Amen. Hey, but your salvation is well protected. Amen. It's indestructible. Amen. That ought to make you excited. Because everything I've ever had, I've tore up. And I can almost be certain that Mark's done that too. Amen. And Bob, there ain't no doubt. Amen. <laughs> I've seen some of the vehicles he drives, and I know how he drives them. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you can drive this salvation as hard as you want. We won't come off. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid of breaking your salvation. It ain't going to happen. Amen. Amen. Just try it out a little bit. Amen. Get up. Hey, get off the training wheels. Launch out into the deep. Amen. Do something with that unspeakable gift. Amen. Well, it's unspeakable. It's on the fire. It's uncorruptible. It's on, I lied to you. I got more points. Hey. It's unsearchable. The unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. That's my gift. I mean, you can't find out how much it's worth. I mean, you can search, search, search under every rock, every place. Hey, man. Can't find it. Don't search it. Hey, man. I got a bank account in heaven that has no end to it. So, well, are you worried about keeping everything all right in heaven? No, the Lord's taking care of that. It's unsearchable. I can't have an overdraft. I can down here.
They'll say, make him say it. No, if he wants it, he's going to get it. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I love him. You know, my wife, if I can all afford it, I'll get it. You know why? Because I love him. Don't you think Christ wants to give us a Because he loves us. But the greatest thing that he ever gave was this unspeakable gift. In order to pay for this gift, the Lord had to take off his crown of majesty and lay it down. His scepter of righteousness, which he rules with, he laid that down. Not that the righteousness left him, but he had to lay his scepter down because he became as we have in the flesh. Amen. He had to take off his royal robes and lay them down. Amen. He took off his all his fine apparel. He had to lay down all his glory because we know that later on he has to be glorified again. He had to lay that all down because in order for that gift to be redeemed, it took a key. To read A king died for his people to count. Amen. What was the price of that gift? The blood, amen, and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was not only king, but creator. He had to lay down all the plans of creation. In John chapter 1, he's called the creator. And he had to lay down all the plans of salvation. And he had to step from looking at all the plans of creation from him. He had to stop at looking on creation. And he became a part of creation. Amen. May I tell you that, just mention this because I like numbers in the Bible. He was one of the triple sevens, the trinity. Seven is the perfect number of God. The number of the Trinity is 777. The number of the Trinity of Satan is 666. The number of man is six. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, the middle word is the 13th word, is son. Amen? The seven, one of the sevens had to come down and take on the form of of a man, a six, and seven plus six equals thirteen because he was a God-man, amen. And thirteen is a curse, and he became a curse for us and hung on a tree, amen, because we're a thirteen, we're under the curse, amen. And in order for you to be born again, what this gift does is, hey, it kills the old man, and when the old man's dead, the six, amen, you become the seven, and you become like him, amen. It all had to happen and God had to do it. Amen. Yeah. Nobody else could come. Nobody else could do that. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. That was the price. A king had to die for his people. And a creator had to die for his creation. That's love. That's the problem. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 18 and 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Listen, God loves you. He gave it all up for you. Amen. What have you given up for Him? What a gift. Considering the price of the gift, I would take great care of it. There are gifts that I have that, I mean, I just don't let anybody fool with. i got some guns I don't let anybody fool with. Amen. Amen. I, 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 if you've got one of those real fancy watches, amen, you might want to have everybody fooling. Something that's precious, amen, something that's wonderful, amen. 
Hey, your salvation is like that. Why are you letting the devil fool with it? Why are you letting the devil ruin your life? Amen. Why are you listening to this world? Amen. Why are you listening to the viper and the snake? Amen. Why are you letting him mess with your life? Amen. He can't mess with your salvation, but he can sure mess with your life. And you'll walk away from the light. Amen. Because you don't use the gift. There's many kids that they open that gift at Christmas and they're all excited about it. But before the end of the year, it's sitting in the quarter and they're not planning to be. That's exactly what some of you are. You need to be reminded that this gift is the gift that never stops giving. It's not something that you leave in the corner of your life. It should be the centerpiece of your entire life. Amen. Number one, because of great price it was paid for. You ought to be very, 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 very jealous of it. Amen? You ought, ought to be very careful with it. Amen. It ought to be raised up and shown to everybody. Amen? It ought to be a light unto the world. The price of the gift. Then the presentation of the gift. Man, we are really, really concerned about how that gift looks. My wife is, man. When I wrap a package, it doesn't look anything like when she wraps it. I have watched her wrap packages, and then I've attempted to do what she does with the bows and all that. It don't work. It just don't work like it does for her. Amen. But that gift has to be wrapped. There's the presentation of that gift. Amen. Well, this gift that we was that we have is wrapped in righteousness. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came unto all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men unto justification to life. It was wrapped with the righteousness of Christ. And when we unwrapped that wrapper of righteousness, God put it on us. He imputed His righteousness to us. What a gift. What a gift. Amen. It was wrapped in love. In Romans 5, 8. But God committed His love toward us and while in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank God. He didn't, he didn't wait for me. Amen. He died for me. I, we was all sinners. Well, many of us weren't even born yet. I don't, I don't think there's anybody else. Everybody wasn't born yet. Amen. There may be some that looks that old, but they're not that old. Amen. Wrapped in love. It was wrapped in swelling clothes. He became like us. Amen. To redeem us. The creator. You know it took the same power of creation to redeem us. Amen. Amen. In Philippians uh, chapter 2 and verse 8, let us let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And his love was presented to us on a cross. What more can a man do than die for his friend? Mark's already said it tonight, and I heard that message also. What more would he have to do to present this gift to you? To show you how much he loves you. And if you've never accepted that gift tonight, what in the world's wrong with you? Are you crazy? Amen. Amen. It was wrapped in our sin because he took our sin. He became sin for us. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It was wrapped in the great cloth. We know that 
can drown to death. He had to die for me and you. Amen. The wrappings of this precious gift, this gift of salvation, amen. He died for us so we wouldn't have to die. Amen. He took the punishment. He took the damnation. He took all those things upon Himself for us because He loved us. I'm just reminding you about the precious gift. The unspeakable gift that Christ has given us. And then we find at the end of it all, God just wrapped it up again in glory. Amen. One day, it said in John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father. In John chapter 12 and verse 28, He said, Father, glorify Thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Amen. Why, He had to take off His glory when He came down here. Amen. He became as a man like us and felt all the things that we feel. Amen. Hey, the King of glory, the Creator of all the universe, amen. He came and became like us and died for us because He loved us. What a gift. What an unspeakable gift. How can we tell you about it? How can we imagine it, amen? What love, what love, what love, amen. Then I'd like to speak the lastly about the power of the gift. There's nothing more disappointing to a child when you buy a gift that requires batteries. And they open it up and they turn the knob and it does not work. For God's sake. <laughs> Take it out of the box and put batteries in it before you give it to them. Amen. Especially all this electronic junk we got today. It's just a piece of plastic without power. Amen. Yeah. And listen, some of you got religion and it's just a piece of plastic without power. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is the power of salvation. Amen. amen. Hey, the power, the preaching of the cross is the power. Amen. Listen, it's all Christ. He's the power. Amen. amen. And I'm glad that my salvation came with a permanent power force. Amen. 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 In John chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but the power, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want you to look at that phrase in John chapter 1 verse 12. To them gave He power to become the sons of God. Power to become. Power to become. Power to become. To become what? Well, we were sinners. Amen? So the first thing, the power, does He gave us power to become sons? Amen? Now what does it take to be a son? All that it takes to be a son is to be born into a family. Amen? Hey, He gave you power to become a son, amen, that you be part of His family, of His bloodline, amen, to be born again into the family of God, amen. Hey, that's what this gift that was given from Calvary has the power to do, uh, to make you a son, but it just doesn't stop there. He calls us many other things. He not only calls us sinners and sons, but He calls us saints. Now, I've studied that word. I'm no theologian, but this is what I got from that word saint. It means holiness. It's talking about somebody that's holy. It talks about in Ephesians chapter 1 to the saints and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. It's separate. There's a separation there. I don't know what it's all about. I might be wrong, amen, but that saint, not only does he want us to be sons, but he wants to live holy lives. Think he wants you to power to become. There's another thing that he calls us servants. It's already been spoken about tonight. Power to become a servant. 
of God. You know what Paul preferred to be called? The servant of God. You know what Peter preferred to be called? The servant of God. Every one of those men that wrote those epistles wanted to be called the servant of God. Amen? You can't serve him unless he gives you power to serve. Amen? This gift empowers you. It gives you power to be something. Hey, I was a sinner. I was worthless. I was headed down the wrong road. All my ideas were wrong. Amen. I was chasing the American dream. I was wicked and undone. And I, hey, I come to myself one day and I said, you know, I deserve to go to hell. Amen. I need to get saved. Amen. And guess what? He gave me the power to come out of the pit. Amen. He gave, gave me the power to become a son. Amen. And then the Lord started working on me about living a better life, amen, being more Christ-like. You mean He hasn't worked on you about doing that? Has He? He has me. How I dress. How I act. How I talk. Where I go. What I look at. Amen. Say, you perfect? No. God's still working on me. But I'm telling you, He wants you to be something more. Amen. There are many sons that have brought shame to their father. Amen. Can you say amen like that? But if they're a servant unto their father, they're not going to bring you shame. If they're serving dad, they're not going to bring you shame. They're going to bring him honor. If you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you are honoring that gift that was given to you. Amen. He gave you power not only to become a servant, to become a steward. Listen, we need people again to be good stewards of what God's given them. Brother Bob talked about it tonight. You know, I, these two men were speaking. I thought, man, this is going to go right along with everything else. Stewards. Not everybody's a missionary. Some people are just stewards. They're providing the funds so others might go. They know how to make money. They know how to run a business. And there's no shame in that. Either. Amen. Amen. And the great thing about a great steward is they know what to do with God's portion of it. Amen. Amen. Give it to God. Amen. And many of them, when they start giving to God, they give more than the portion allotted to them. They make up the difference for others. Amen. They can't give. Amen. Or won't give. Amen. What? Power to become. He said, well, it's like my father-in-law. He said he's going to take all his money with him. That's what he said. My dad was joking around and he said, well, Don, I'll, if you're going to do that, I'll just... I'll write you a check for it. You'll get it after a while. <laughs> Servants. Stewards. Soldiers. Amen. Power to become something for God. Amen. It's an unspeakable gift. One on searchable riches. And there's no power limitation. If you would have ever told me, amen, that I was going to go where I've been and said what I've said and done what I've done, I would have said you was absolutely crazy. Nobody could take a hillbilly and do that. Nobody could take somebody like me and do that. But it's not me. It's the gift. It's unspeakable. Amen. It's uh, unspeakable joy. Amen. What God can do with you. And it's not you. Very often we look at ourselves and we see all the limitations. And nobody knows you better than you know you. Nobody in here knows how worthless they are. Like I know how worthless I am. 
And many times I say, why on earth would God even use somebody like me? Because of the gift. Amen. Amen. Unspeakable. Unsearchable. Undefined. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Uncorruptible. If you haven't got that gift tonight, the altars are open that you might receive it. But here's the very sad part. Some of you have opened the gift. You peeled off all the wrappers and it sets before you. But you've never used it. You have it, but you've never used it. Amen. Won't you come to the altar tonight and say, God, I'm going to use what you gave me. <laughs> Amen. I know, Lord, that I'm not much, but I know this gift has the ability for me to have power to become. I challenge you. Amen. Try God. Start handing out a few tracks. Start witnessing to a few people. Start living right before God. Power to become. The other thing it has power is to cover our failures. <coughs> Amen. Because it has the power of grace. Amen. How many of you failed? I have. How many of you messed up? How many of you sinned after you got saved? You're not alone. We'd all, if we were probably honest, could stand up and say we have. But this gift not only has the power for us to serve, power for us to do those things. It has the power of forgiveness and the power of grace. This unspeakable can't say enough about it. There's not words in any human's vocabulary to tell you all that he can do. Dear Father, we come before you. God, tonight maybe somebody just needs to experience that power. They've opened the gift, but they sure haven't used it. God, I pray that you'd break their heart. Consider the price of it. Consider how precious it is. Consider how meticulously it was given and with what love it was prepared. Oh, God, that they come to the realization that Christ is worth it all. God, I pray that if there's some here that, Lord, just need forgiveness. Boy, they just need to get right with the Lord. That that gift also has the power of grace. The power of forgiveness. Help them, Lord, this night. God, as you've helped me all the many times that I've used the power of forgiveness. Lord, the power of grace. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. And thank you, my God, for your marvelous grace. I ask it all in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.